I want to share with you something that is very controversial and a lot of people will disagree, but I want to make mention of this because I believe that it's harming a lot of people's bodies. That is this idea that we need to up our fiber. Now, I'm not saying that some people shouldn't up their fiber. It depends on where they are. There's a lot of variables that can be related to this, you know, their age, what they're eating, what kind of problems they're having. But for the most part, there's a lot of people that's getting way too much fiber in their diet. And the reason why a lot of times there are problems with bloating and irritable bowel syndrome and uh, digestive and gut issues and all these complications and constipation and diarrhea and you know all of this stuff uh, that's happening with people's body a lot of times they're getting too much fiber and if you can't explain why there are people who eat for example a high fat low carb animal based diet for the most part every single day and they have normal bowel movements don't have any complications they're reversing their chronic diseases they're not eating any fiber in their diet but yet they're thriving and they feel good and their energy levels are up and they're reversing disease how is that possible if they're not uh, eating any fiber this makes me question this whole idea of eating so much fiber are we going in a wrong direction with all of the fiber that we're making people eat and then we continue to see people have like issues with gas and bloating and stomach pain and energy problems and problems with bowel movements and and we're still like up in the fiber like could it be that they're they're eating too much fiber maybe too much fiber is causing digestive issues and so i just wanted to like bring that into curiosity because I think sometimes we're just telling everybody to do all the same thing and we're not assessing and analyzing enough, you know, what this particular person is dealing with. What if this person is, I'm a vegan, I'm on a plant-based diet, I'm eating nothing but fiber all day and they're still having bloating issues and problems because I know a lot of people like that. They're having problems with their digestive system, with digesting things. They have irritable bowel syndrome, but they have a lot of fiber. And then the only answer and solution is eat more fiber. Well, <laughs> well, why are they having the problems in the first place? You know, have we assessed if it's too much fiber, if it's too much plants, if it's agitating their stomach, we can't keep treating everything the same way and just throwing these like health principles out there. We have to know that there's just certain things that are unhealthy for certain people, whether a person deems them as healthy in general or not, you know, and we got to come away with what we think is quote unquote healthy as a healthy principle for everybody and know that some of this stuff could be damaging somebody's body. And so we have to take a more intellectual approach, a more research based approach, a more organic approach. Uh, an approach where we're collecting data from real people and seeing that, okay, some people are having uh, problems with this. And so, yeah, I want to state that some people have problems with too much fiber. And if we put this health principle out that a healthy based diet is a diet full of a, a lot of fiber, you know, if we put that out as a basic principle and then we have people saying, okay, I'm, my, I'm having problems with my stomach, but I know that eating a lot of fiber is good. So I'm, all, I'm going to eat more fiber and I'm going to supplement with more fiber. And then people are getting sicker and sicker and they're having more and more problems with their digestive system and their gut. And they don't know how to solve the problem. And then we say, okay, go take some probiotics. And, you know, they take some pro probiotics and then well, they still having the same problem. And it's like, okay, then they eat more vegetables and then, and then they get diarrhea or they're, they're going to the bathroom even more throughout the day. And they think that's okay. And, you know, to, to, to keep eating and then going to the bathroom all day. Like we have to find a better approach uh, to where our bodies are absorbing our nutrients a lot better, first of all, because if you're having digestive issues, then that means that you're not absorbing the nutrients from the foods that you are eating. And yes, you're going to have complications. It's going to cause um, inflammation. And then you're not going to have, you know, the resources within your body and in your diet to be able to reverse certain diseases. And so I think it's uh, time that we take a moment, take a step back, evaluate the process, see what is really working and what is 
isn't and stop giving this old school advice approach, I guess, or approach to advice, whichever way you want to see it, that is not helping people to heal. We got to know that something's wrong. Something is wrong. And that means we have to evaluate what we've been saying to people. And I'm not saying I'm totally against fiber or totally against something all the way. I'm just saying that what works for one person may not work for the next person. And we don't want to be dogmatic in the approach. And uh, there are some suggestible things that are good for everybody. Like let's lower our sugar intake or let's lower eating processed foods. Like that's something that's going to help everybody. There's nobody who eats a lot of processed foods foods with added sugar and refined sugar that can heal their body in in a in a good way now some people can eat like that and still somehow thrive in you know uh or live long i don't i don't want to say thrive i don't know how much they're thriving or how much their energy levels are taking a hit from that or you know how much inflammation or how much pain they're they're functioning with i'm not sure but i know that that's not something that one person Uh, confined as an advantage and another person not that's like a a real systematic thing but there's other stuff like eat more fiber and exercise more well just some people if you tell them to exercise more what kind of exercise more like are they exercising more on a on a, a injury are they doing more high intensity interval training when their body's stressed out and they actually need to do low impact exercise routines just for a period of time i know i've had to do that before when i had high levels of anxiety and, and adrenal fatigue syndrome i actually had to stop doing the high intensity interval training and I and I did more walking and more stress free type of training or training that just ha- actually helped me to deal with stress and lower stress. So and then sometimes you, up in the exercise helps people to cope with stress a little bit more. So, you know, there's there's these things that we have to evaluate on a biological individuality kind of approach. And we have to stop being so matter of fact, unless it's matter of fact, like let's stop taking in a lot of added sugar in your food or processed food or make sure that it says non-gmo project on your food labels like that's a for everybody kind of deal but this fiber situation is not a for everybody deal because everybody don't have the same digestive issues and problems so i wanted to point that out because it's time for us to start thinking and really gathering the information from each individual to make sure that we're giving them the healthiest approach possible to be able to reverse disease and live a very high quality life as long as they can live and as best as they can live.